Today we're looking at work number nine, which is the Ambum Stone. The artist architect is unknown. It's dated around 1500 BCE. It's oceanic art. The medium is gray whack. It's from the Ambum Valley, Benga Province, Papua New Guinea, and it's 20 by 7.5 by 14 centimeters. For some visual analysis, we can see it's some kind of animal, possibly the fetal form of an echidna, which is a spiny anteater, a bird, fruit bat, or a now extinct mega-sized marsupial. It has rounded features, stylized eyes, ears, and nostrils in relief, shoulder blades, and an umbilicus, possibly, uh, that indicates that the maker may understand anatomy. It has a freestanding neck, a curved head, and a long nose. The upper limbs hug the torso, which form a cupped space with the body. The Ambum Stone is a sculpture in the round, meaning it's completely detached from a background, a 3D figure, versus a relief, meaning a design is still attached to the background. There were 12 total objects like the Ambum Stone from New Guinea that are a mortar and pestle, which is used to pound food, etc. And you can see one on the top right. The Ambum Stone is incredibly detailed and symmetrical, meaning it's a very time-consuming to make, and it's special and valued. Gruach is a very hard sedimentary stone, further adding to the time that it must have taken. There is a slightly shiny patina on raised surfaces, indicating that it was well used. Objects like the Ambum Stone are called Bilong Tumbuna, literally translates as the bones of the ancestors used by the Enga people. Now, these uh, Bilong Tumbuna are a class of cult objects used as ritual mechanisms where ancestors reside and objects have a life of their own. They can move around, mate, and reproduce. In the Ambum Stone's case, they can go on adventures and create controversy. Enga society is based on something called the big man system. Power depends on one, natural resources, and you know your control of them, pigs, produce, etc., and two, supernatural forces like ancestors or God. Bilong Tumbuna were imbued with supernatural powers through ritual uh, buried in ancestral land. Regular pig sacrifices were necessary to appease the stones and the ancestors residing inside. If properly cared for, they can ward off danger and promote fertility and vigor of the tribe and land. The Ambum Stone is a great piece to start talking about the effects of colonization and the ownership debate of many works of art. So Christianity was introduced in, to New Guinea in the 1930s, and it was largely embraced. Christianity mapped onto the big man system quite well. Objects like the Ambum Stone were no longer important spiritually, but valued for their quote-unquote exotic nature as primitive art. Now, the Ambum Stone has exchanged many hands, and the route that people can trace now is from two boys who sold it for 20 shillings, to a European trader, to a London art dealer, to the Australian National Gallery in 1977, who paid 115,000 United States dollars for the Ambum Stone. So, who does the Ambum Stone belong to? Because we don't even know where the two boys got the Ambum Stone in the first place. Should art that originated from Papua New Guinea be returned to Papua New Guinea? Um, or does it rightfully, quote-unquote, belong to Australia now because they bought it? Uh, the Ambum Stone was dropped and cracked in loan at a museum in Paris in 2000. With this unfortunate accident, people were able to date the work, but it also sparked the ownership debate. 